and welcome Angelinos. We thank you for tuning in to yet another brilliant episode of the Galaxy Guy podcast, hosted by Chris Maldonado, a show made by loyal Galaxy fans for loyal Galaxy fans who bleed blue, white and gold. So join us as we talk about the ins and outs, as well as the ups and downs of your favourite team, the one and only, the Los Angeles Galaxy. Bienvenidos Angelinos, welcome Galaxy fans to the Galaxy Guys show. Como siempre, I'm your host, Chris Maldonado, bringing all of you another solid player interview. Let's talk about solid because tonight I have the pleasure of having with me a very solid and special player, a guy who kicked off his career over the pond as a young prospect playing for English side Watford FC, did the, did the majority of his playing between the sticks across all of England. And of course, most of you now will recognize him as your starting goalkeeper for your LA Galaxy. I am, of course, speaking about the one and only Jonathan Bond. Jonathan, how are you doing tonight, brother? Chris, thank you for the intro. It was very kind. Um, I'm very good. I'm, I'm very happy to be here and um, looking forward to it. So let's go. Let's kick it off. Awesome, man. And listen, speaking of England, I, I, I have to I have to bring it up. We have to talk about it a little bit. I have to ask you, how did you experience that Euro final on Sunday? Um, I have a friend who lives out who's lived out here for a while. He lives down in Orange County. Um, and I think there was basically a, a youth club that he works for, and there's a load of English guys that watching the Euros every game together. And they've invited me to all the games, but every time there's a game, I think we we have a game um, on the Wednesday or on the Saturday in the quarterfinal and the semifinal. So finally, we had a day off yesterday and I was like, okay, fine, I'll come down. We went to a pub in Huntington and there's a lot more English people that live in Huntington than what I realised. So it was like a traditional English feel where we were just lots of English people packed into a pub um and that's how that's how i experienced it and it was just the same as um pretty much any huge england game before where we start well and then it all just crumbles and then we lose on penalties it's just <laughs> the same thing every time where where did it all go wrong man what do you think where did it all go wrong i don't know i, I think italy italy are a great team um i'd like to see us maybe just take a few more risks be a bit braver uh, on the ball and but it's difficult when you're playing in a final like that. Um, it's high pressure scenario. So, yeah, it's they did well. I mean, they went all the way to penalties, so you can't ask for much more. It's it's. I mean, they did fairly well in the last World Cup as well, you know. And it's it's a very promising England team. Obviously, very disappointing to say the least. I have to say though, I was rooting for England um, for some for some very selfish reasons. Because honestly, I knew I was having you on the show today, so I figured <laughs> I'll be in a better mood. <laughs> England has to win. Jonathan Bond's going to be in a much better mood. <laughs> well, Maldonado, where's what? What? Um, where does that name come from? What's the background to it? Maldonado literally means you're ill-gifted. It's Spanish. It means Maldonado. Okay, okay, okay. It means you're. So if you had to, if you had to support one team from the Euros, who would you? Who would you support? That's a tough one, man. I I I love Portugal because of Cristiano okay. Ronaldo and all. Yeah, honesty. yeah, yeah, yeah. The king. The king. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've forgotten your question now. Sorry, got distracted. <laughs> no, you're good, man. Listen, it's 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 good. I'm glad to have you on the show. Win or lose, right? You're 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 here. Yeah. Um, Happy to be here. Obviously, you would have been on cloud nine. I imagine if England had won that game. Um, <laughs> but it's good, man. It's good. I, I definitely feel like I'm in an English mood today. Uh, matter of fact, I've got my, my cup of tea and everything oh, wow. ready to go. You know? <laughs> I'm just Was missing, uh, tea? it's, it's just a straight black, you know, okay, I, I, nice. it's the most English thing that I can find around the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm impressed. I, I don't have the, uh, the crumpets is what you guys call it, right? No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have some gingerbread men in the cupboard somewhere, but <laughs> <laughs> had to get in the mood for this for this interview, man. But Jonathan, before we begin, you know, I, I, I do I do have to ask you something. You have to know that at this point here with the Galaxy, the Galaxy fans have really taken to you. 
they they you've you've quickly become a fan favorite and i'm sure you know about that because you you're on social media there have been plenty of nicknames thrown around out there for you and i'm sure you've heard some of them as well are there any nicknames that you've heard that you personally like maybe you have a favorite um obviously my nickname to everyone is always bondy and i hear that a lot from the guys behind the goal um but then i've seen the the big sign with like says the wall in kind of like written in blood almost <laughs> on the white wall um so i like that one as well you know both sure. both of those are great so and i must say you know <clears throat> it goes hand in hand you know if you play well the fans like you but it also helps the other way around you know if you feel the support of the fans then you play well so sure. it's kind of a give and take thing and I felt the love from the fans from from minute one um, so I, I felt comfortable you know from the first game when we played oh we played in Miami there was a lot of, of Galaxy fans there but you know when we played the first home game I felt that warmth from them it was great so yeah um, it's only helping me to play better and you know, knowing how passionate Galaxy fans are, I wouldn't be surprised if that sign was written in blood. <laughs> blood. <laughs> Just rewriting it every yeah. week. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, that's great, man. Listen, th I I would say that the most suitable nickname for you is is um, the wall, <laughs> the brick wall. Thank you. I've yeah. heard that one very often across all social media, on the Galaxy Family Discord, where it's like the largest Galaxy community on Discord. Uh, shout out to them. Um, but yeah, that seems to be it. So safe to say that you're bond the brick wall. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I mean, no one's going to complain. No goalkeeper in the world is going to complain about that nickname. So, so we'll uh, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. We'll go with that. Right on. So I do want to talk some soccer with you, uh, Jonathan. But like I tell my other guests, um, I've told several of your teammates in the past couple of weeks as well, Julian Araujo, Sebastian Legette. Um, I know you guys have done a million interviews, uh, a million and one if you count this one, and you've, you've probably heard a lot of the same questions a hundred times, uh, and you've repeated the same answers a hundred times. So uh, yeah, we try to do something a little bit different here on the show, something a little lighter, a little friendlier. So how about we start off with some some a lightning round of questions, some quick fire questions. Quick fire, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Nothing too personal, maybe some interesting stuff that fans haven't learned about you yet. So what do you say? Shall we do it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Awesome. So let's start with 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 some easy questions. We'll ease you into it and then we'll build into something a little more substantial. Okay. Okay. First of all, I have to ask, what is your favorite soccer club of all time? Uh, I wish I had uh, a cooler answer, but uh, my dad grew up from, uh, he was he was in central London and he went every week when he was a boy to watch Chelsea. So he grew up as a Chelsea fan and I, I really didn't have a choice in the matter. So from, from the day I was old enough to go to a football stadium, he was taking me to Chelsea games and we were going together with my mum and my sister even sometimes as well. Uh, every other weekend to every home game some of the away games as well when we were not very good um, <laughs> back in the day I mean we were always decent but we weren't good good right and then obviously that changed over the years so yeah it was it was Chelsea Chelsea okay that's that's not a that's not a bad team to to follow no I mean now it's yeah it's a popular it's a popular team and it's a an easy answer but at the time when I was younger Everyone supported Man United because they won the league every, <laughs> Man every United. year. And, it's been a long yeah. time, man. Man United. Long I know. Time. I know. Uh, okay. Well, well, so, okay. Yeah, so, Chelsea it is. Chelsea. That's not, that's not a bad answer. Okay. So on the same topic, talked about soccer team. Who is your favorite all-time soccer player? Goalkeeper, defender, striker, whatever. Your all-time favorite. It's a really difficult one. I mean, naturally, I always straight away think of Chelsea players because they uh, they were the, the guys that I idolised. But really, the biggest, the one that had the biggest impact, there's two really, the one that had the biggest impact was an, actually an ex-Galaxy uh, player as well, um, Carlo Cudicini. So he really okay. was the reason why I was a goalkeeper. Um, wow. He was just, he came in and started playing at Chelsea and he was just amazing. He used to make these amazing saves. And it was at an age where I was really impressionable. 
So I was kind of really taken in by that. And I'd go home and try and recreate what I'd seen him do. And then I just sort of fell in love with that goalkeeping and uh, bought his gloves and his boots and all that kind of stuff. So um, Cudicini. And then as I was getting older, you know, I tried to look at Petr Cech and uh, Gianfranco Zola was obviously a big one as well back in the day. So, yeah. Hey, th those aren't some bad idols to have. And I have to no. say, you're so far you're doing a million times better than... than uh... <laughs> than he did when he was with the galaxy with us carlo yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely uh tell of two uh tell of two sides here but <laughs> well you know zach zach works at the um at the, the like he's like the play where well, i see player liaison he does a lot more than that i mean he sure. basically runs the whole the whole show and uh it was my birthday in may and he said oh he literally said the other week oh i forgot i was gonna get your birthday present i was like well what he was like, I was going to get you like a, I think he said a video or a sign something from Kudicini. I was like, oh, like you, you forgot that. And he was yeah. like, yeah, I know. Sorry. Next year. And I <laughs> yeah, was no like, big oh, deal. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So I'm waiting on that one still. And that makes sense. Goalkeeper, you idolize goalkeepers. That's what yeah. you became, a goalkeeper. Okay. Interesting. We didn't know that. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming most Galaxy fans didn't know that. So we're off to a good start there. Moving forward, we have to ask you this. I have to ask you this, okay, because as a goalkeeper, naturally, you're extremely good with your hands, right? Stopping balls, catching them, ball distribution. Mm -hmm. It's obviously the primary reason why we're here now, where you're at now. What else is Jonathan Bond really good at using his hands? Um, first thing I'd probably go to is the table tennis. Um, when I was – I haven't played for a while now, but when I do play a lot, then I feel – I love, I love that game. I could play table tennis for hours. Um, when I was really young, I used to play tennis a lot. Um, but then I really did, I stopped and I, you know, now I try to go back to it and I'm rubbish, but, um, <laughs> table tennis. Yeah. I, I also find okay. the more I play table tennis, actually, sometimes the better reactions you get, even in football and you see things quicker. So yeah, it's a, it's a great game. I, I do enjoy playing it. I can see that the skill set from that translating well into soccer. For a goalkeeper, yeah. at least. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have to ask you this question as well, because I, I it's it's just a question that the Galaxy fans need to know. What is Jonathan Bond's favorite movie of all time? Hmm. Um, it's hard. It's difficult not to say Wolf of Wall Street, really. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street is... It's not everyone's cup of tea, but it's a film that's it's it's two and a half, three hours long. Sure. And I just find that whenever it's on, I put it on straight away movie. over everything. And I can pick it up at any point in the movie. You know, and I can pick it up an hour and a half in, be just as happy, or two hours in, or from the start. It's just it's just entertainment and it's it's kind of lighthearted. I know there's some sort of dark scenes in there, but sure. It's kind of just like a lot of ridiculousness and it's just very entertaining. Um, I'm sure it's much, maybe a bit more of a, a guy's film, but when I was younger, Jurassic Park as well, the, the first one Jurassic was great. Park. Yeah, Jurassic Park was great. Can't go wrong with either of those movies, but you know what? I, I'm actually a little surprised that you didn't say any of the James Bond movies. James Bond, yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I don't know. I don't know just because of the name, like... yeah. I felt like I had a special affiliation with James Bond and sure. I watched all the films, had the whole box set. There's not a film that I haven't watched. I've seen all the films. Um, I know I, whenever we go to like pub quizzes back in England, there's always a James Bond ground. I'm usually quite good at it. So like I, when I was younger, I really did love it, but um, I don't know. I kind of miss the older films compared to the new ones now. They, uh, they're not the same. The Sean Connery days is the best days. Yeah, yeah, Roger Moore, Sean Connery. Yeah. 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 Okay. Jurassic Park, Wolf of Wall Street. Those aren't those aren't bad movies. Okay. I agree. Yeah, yeah. The staples, yeah. Okay. So Jonathan, I, I do understand that that you you have a little bit of Spanish in you, is that right? Through your through your mother, Elena. She's she's Spanish. Okay, so mm. so I, I have to ask you, do you do you speak a little Spanish? Un poquito. Un poquito. Now, okay, now, Jonathan, here's the thing, right? 
the majority of Galaxy fans are Hispanic. The majority yeah. of fans of the show are Hispanic. Can Jonathan Bond speak a little Spanish for us? No, I've, honestly, <laughs> this would be the first time that I would do it on camera. But <clears throat> what I find is mm -hmm. when I'm speaking behind closed doors or whatever, I, I'll, mm -hmm. ma I'll make lots of grammatical mistakes. But I think mm -hmm. people know what I'm saying. I can kind of get by. But Pero then when it comes to doing it, sí. Si sí, sí, entiendes no, el español. Entiendo más que hablo. Entiendes más que hablas. Sí, it makes sense. Yeah, sí. Habla, yeah. Hablas. Entonces, entonces si, si, si tienes que tener una conversación en español, entiendes sí. completamente bien. Sí, sí, bien, bien sí. Okay. okay. That's sí. awesome. That's awesome. That's, I... we, can, we can speak a little bit, but just keep it simple. <laughs> okay. All right. We could... tengo, tengo familia en, en Madrid. Tienes so... familia en Madrid. Okay, so sí. tu mamá es, es de Madrid. No, mi mamá es de, sí, pero es de Seattle. Um, okay, Seattle. And that's where your parents met, and then they flew back to England. Sí, yeah. Sí. Um, pero todo, todo mi familia, todos mis, mis primas um, o primos um, están en, o viven en, en Madrid. Wow. Okay. So now that's actually surprising now. You're saying that to me, that you're not a Real Madrid fan. <laughs> See, yeah, my family are split down the middle. So half of them are Real Madrid fans and half of them Atleti. Oh, so it's always yeah, good fun when, when that game being played. Um, <laughs> and that we even had some of our family came over. Atleti played Chelsea in the um, Champions League semi-final. And they, they came to the game. We did that whole thing and Atleti won. They went through and played Madrid <clears throat> in the so final. Man. But yeah, it's, it's, that is fun when that happens. Hey. The, I'm glad. I'm glad you spoke just a little bit of Spanish for us. Now I know the next time on a press conference call with you guys, um, I'll be sure to ask you your next question in Spanish. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that will be. I just get nervous. Like when someone says it, it's like yeah. it's when you're relaxed and you, no, you know you're not being judged, and then it's easy. Like yeah. I can speak probably more than what most people think, but. When someone puts you on the spot like that, it's like, oh, sure. and then you might make a mistake or whatever. And it's, yeah. Well, I did put you on the spot, but you know what? You sound good, man. Just very, very <laughs> little accent there. You sound like a Spaniard. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. It's very different. Uh, the accent is very different though, yeah. um, in Spain because my, uh, some of well, my teammates, they speak, you know, they say the, the words and the letters like the letter c for example is yeah. they say with an s no so but right. then we say everything like right. with a lisp like so <laughs> we feli we say feli we feli right right yeah or, but, but then well, everyone's like why are you speaking like that like <laughs> and i'm like oh yeah <laughs> oh okay. man well hey listen if in case any any of our uh female listeners out there or any of the female galaxy fans who didn't already like you or think that your your english accent was extremely attractive they just heard you speak spanish i mean game over dude right <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome man i appreciate that um okay so you are a a a, a fantastic goalkeeper phenomenal goalkeeper that's been established okay but if let's say jonathan if soccer had never happened for you let's just say you never went pro what would jonathan bond be doing right now as a career such a difficult question um i should really have a go-to answer because i've had this question before but it's difficult. Like I just couldn't imagine myself doing anything different when I was younger. Um, I imagine I would still do something in football, whether that be a coach or an analyst or I don't know, a scout. I don't know, something like that. Sure. Um, it would be, I mean, football is my life. So it, it would definitely be football related. I imagine soccer related. Okay, that's fair. So it's fair to say that eventually, many years down the line, when you do retire as a player, safe to say or safe to assume that you'll continue working 
as a soccer coach or a soccer scout to, to some extent. Is that right? I think so. I think so. I don't, I don't know in what um, capacity, but I think so. I mean, it's just, it's my life. It's just what I know most about. It's what I'm most passionate about. It makes sense. I'm sure the Galaxy would love to have you on the staff, man, eventually. As the manager. <laughs> As the manager, hey. Sometimes goalkeepers make really good managers. So. I know, yeah, strange, yeah. All right. Yeah. So then you'll have to win an MLS Cup as a player and then as a coach. That would be good. That would be perfect. Or multiple as both. Or multiple as both. That's right. Yeah. Starting this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's not waste time. <laughs> Let's not waste time. So – Jonathan, if let's say hypothetical, if you ever were to get stranded on an island with one of your current teammates, who would you prefer being stranded with and why? Um I I'd have to go Sasha, um, Kleshton, I think. We have we could talk all day. I mean, we talk about everything from football just to life in general we have a lot in common and we're very it's very easy to to chat and obviously Derek as well like um when when I first moved here before the before pre-season training had even started Derek and I we did everything together we went for for dinner lunch we were exploring around LA um so yeah it'd be difficult to choose between those two or uh, you know Sasha and I, we we have we do have long conversations and we we um we get on very well. So it'd probably be Sasha, and he's got the experience and he would know <laughs> hopefully what to do. That's why I think I choose Sasha over Derek. I think Derek would really know what he's doing on a, on a desert island. Whereas Sasha, he would he would have some idea. I think sure of how to survive. I can see that. I can see that. He's yeah. got that ruggedness about him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah street smart. Um, his mustache would be very long by the end of it, by the time we got kind of rescued. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'd probably go Sasha. Right on. Okay. You know, I've, I've heard, I've heard uh, that Sasha is a, a locker room favorite among other players yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, like he's 35 years old at the right times, you know, and then right. he's like 21 years old at the right times. You know, he's like one of the, one of the kids in the changing room and then, you know, when it comes to game day and on the pitch and stuff, you know, we can feel his experience. And sure. He's definitely a leader. So, you know, he's very, he's very good at that, that balance. Um, he gets on with, with everyone all, uh, throughout the change room, all different personalities. So, yeah. Awesome. We'll have to get Sasha on the show and see what he says. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who he choose. It'd be interesting to know. Right on. Okay. So you, you did mention um, when you got here, uh, you were with Derek. You guys did a, a fair bit of exploring around LA. I know you'd been here before as as a tourist. You'd been here on vacation, on holiday. But yeah. now that now that you're you're living here in LA, first of all, have you ever felt homesick at any point during your stay here in LA? I haven't. I haven't. I. Um... I just, I'm not one of those people. It's not like I don't miss my family. Of course I miss my family, but mm -hmm. I just, I don't need to be, I always feel that connection with them no matter where I am, whether I'm in America or Australia or around the corner. Sure. But um, I don't, I'm, I don't think I've been happier. You know, I feel very settled. I love it here. The weather, I know everyone talks about the weather, but the weather is a big I, I laugh but the weather is a big thing because sure. it it genuinely changes your mood and um i feel like it's kind of like a culture cultural thing you know in england we are a certain way because the weather is basically crap every day <laughs> and then you know everyone's a lot happier a lot more positive here and it's sunny every day and it's yeah. just it it changes it changes your mood and your feel and then everything like yeah, everyone's so nice, everyone's so positive out here, everyone's so enthusiastic. The environment's great. I'm enjoying my football. I'm enjoying the city. I don't understand. I, I'm waiting to see like a, a negative to it. Right? It's expensive. It's yeah. expensive. That's yeah. that's a negative, so I guess. You 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 don't drive then? Is that is that what you're telling me? No, I drive. Yeah, yeah, I drive. Oh, I drive. Why would you? What gave you that impression that I didn't drive? 
Well, usually the number one negative about LA is the the traffic. Oh, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? The traffic's not been too bad, yeah. actually. Um, okay. Yeah, I live up towards like Century City. Um, You're my neighbor, man. <laughs> oh, really? You around the corner? <laughs> I'm, I'm out here on the west side, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, you know, when we drive down to Carson, sure, it's kind of the right way in the morning, you know. So, drive like, the all the traffic's Bay. going up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, like, not many people are going down. So, it's an easy drive in the morning. Going back up is a little bit more difficult, but otherwise, it's not too bad. It's not bad. Huh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's traffic and traffic and uh, and expensive. I guess yeah. are the two things here. Yeah, yeah, no, super expensive. But I, I was I was I was smiling earlier when you were talking about the weather, because and and I did mention this to you. I think a couple press conferences ago, the very first time we saw you, Jonathan, you definitely weren't as tanned as you are now. <laughs> <laughs> you always oh, knew I could get there. Yeah, you've gone <laughs> about three shades darker yeah. since you've been in yeah. LA. Yeah, no, no, I love, I, I love that. Every every time I come on holiday, all I do every day is just sit and sunbathe. I go back to England, I'm so brown, and then two weeks later, it's just gone. Or like a month later, it's gone, and it's just by the by Christmas, you're just white as a ghost. So yeah, it's nice to have it all year round this time. So out of all of those awesome things you've experienced in LA so far, obviously you love it, but there has to be one thing above everything else that you absolutely love about LA what's that one thing I think everyone would expect me to say like in and out burger here or something but <laughs> it's not it's like it wouldn't be a bad answer but it's not something specific it's the fact that I can kind of leave the apartment and there's just so much freedom and choice of where to go and what to do and it's we don't do the same thing every day you know there's just it's constantly exploring and that's just that is what i love about la you can go to the beach you can go to six flags you can go to universal studios you can go to a, a pool i mean there's it's endless i mean you can even go to the mountains and stuff i know we sure. obviously we're not allowed to do that but um it's just great it's great that's that's what i love about la is the freedom it's the freedom and the choice i agree I mean, there's, it's like you said, you're in the beach 10 minutes, right? You can go to the beach in yeah. 10 minutes. If you want to go to the desert, you can be to the desert. You want to go to the forest, you can be there in an hour. If you want to go to the mountains, you can be there in an hour. If you want to watch a movie, it's just ridiculous amounts yeah. of options. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, and there's so many interesting people here as well. You know, you're just surrounded by people who are doing all kinds of interesting things, okay. um, which is amazing, really. Have you, so you, li you live on the West side, it's, it's century city. We're not too far from, from Beverly Hills, from, from Hollywood. Have you ran into any celebrities since you've been here? I think, yes, but I think the, um, the first, the only one where I've been like, oh wow, is cause I watch, um, have you seen Entourage, the series? Yeah, Entourage, sure, sure. So Ari Gold is the um, the agent who I just find so funny in that series. And he was one of the first people that I saw. And I was like, oh, wow, that's Ari Gold. And uh, we were sat there having lunch with him. And he was talking about making films. So he actually sound, it's Jeremy Piven, sorry, who I'm talking about, the actor. But, you know, he sounded like his character. And I was just <laughs> finding it funny because it was, he was the same. You know, yeah. It was Jeremy Piven, but he was Ari Gold. So it was wow. funny. Yeah, well, I mean... That's awesome. I, I, I've been at traffic stops where I've turned around and it's like, Hey, wait a minute. That's Queen Latifah in a Bentley. <laughs> you know? It's yeah, so surreal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is strange. It's, but I think, you know, the longer you stay here, the more it kind of washes over you, I'd imagine, and kind of just becomes normal. Becomes normal. Just see some random yeah. celebrity at a Starbucks, you know, just a yeah, Monday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. That's great. So safe to say, Jonathan Bond absolutely loves LA. Absolutely, yeah. 100%. Awesome, awesome yeah. man. Galaxy fans love knowing that. <laughs> but but Jonathan, here's the real question, okay? The real question that all Galaxy fans need an answer to. Tough one. Cats or dogs and why? This is an easy one for me. Uh 
it's not I, it's not an easy one. It is an easy one. It's dogs for me because they they're less independent. So cats they don't need you. You know, as long yeah. as they've got water. And this isn't this. I'm generalizing, by the way. This is not. I'm, there'll be loads of people probably that say, "Well, hold on, my cat loves you know cuddling and spending time." But I think the dogs are a little bit more reliant on you. They that that that. They don't like it when you leave. Cats, I think, when you leave, they're all right. You know, they're, they're fine. <laughs> they don't care. Um, yeah. But I, I, I've always grown up having having dog. We always have, actually, to be fair, we always had a cat. Always at least one cat. Sometimes we had two. But um, the dogs just always took kind of everyone's attention. And I had a dog. I left him back at home. And I moved here with my uh, with my mom and my sister. So... Yeah, I'm I'm definitely a dog a dog guy, a dog person. Awesome. I like that answer, man. I'm also a dog person. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. For some reason, listen, I like cats, right? But it, it dogs just do so many for so many things for humans. You know, they can do just yes. about any job. They they serve as rescue dogs, they can sniff out bombs. That's true, yeah. They can uh, you know, they serve as companions to to sick people that are dying, therapy dogs, you know, they guide the blind. It's it's ridiculous. Cats can clean themselves yeah. with their tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's you know, true. That's so true. yeah, you get a lot more love from a dog too. They just, you do. I think, I think you do personally, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Well, there you go. Listen, those were some fun responses. Hopefully the fans uh, learned a couple of new things from you just now. I know I did. Um, so that that that's good and it sounds like you're pretty well adjusted in la and it, it's showing it's reflecting in your game um so i have to say congratulations on that so far the performances this season have been good you were even named player of the week uh, a couple weeks ago week number seven yep. which is it's not very common in mls for a goalkeeper to be named player of the week you know so yeah ha i have to ask you also as well have you given much thought at um I know for a fact your name has to be on the short list for that all-star game. Would you be, would you be at all interested in playing in an all-star game for the MLS? Yeah, I would love it. I would love to, um, to, to, to get selected, but I don't know how the selection process goes. You know, I don't know whether the fans. Um, yeah. And then uh, how is it just, it's just up to the fans completely. It's not the manager, and it, the, the fans, uh, the fans. And then there's Media. a, com the commissioner, the commissioner, Don Garber uh, gets to select, I think one or two players that he just wants to throw in there, just throw in. But I have a feeling, Jonathan, I have a gut feeling. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that you're going to be on that list at the very least. And I would not be surprised if you end up on that all-star team. And that's always a fun yeah, experience, yeah. man. It's, I would love it, honestly. I would love to do that. Uh, but it's just difficult. And, you know, there's a lot of other good goalkeepers in the league. Um, some American as well, which I'm sure um, makes them very popular. So not that say I'm not American, but, you know, they're, they're <laughs> in the national team and stuff. So uh, I'll have to wait and see. Uh, it's not something I think about every day, but it's something that I definitely, I would, I would love. I would love to get selected. So yeah. let's see. It's in, a, it's in a month or two months. Yeah, months. against yeah. against the best players from the Mexican league. So it's 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 definitely yes. going to be a very yeah yeah that'd be a big game. game. Yeah, yeah. Listen, but we'll get it trending. As well. Yeah, it's here in LA at uh, across the, the the road here from uh, from us at uh, Bank of California Stadium. Um, yeah. yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it trending. We'll get Bond for MLS All Star great. Team trending on on social media. We'll get you on there, man. Um, and speaking of, of goalkeepers, you. speaking of goalkeepers, there's been a lot of comparison between you and a previous Galaxy goalkeeper who who also was one of the all-time favorites for the Galaxy. That's Jaime Pinedo. Have you heard of him before? Panamanian international Jaime Pinedo played with the Galaxy, won an MLS Cup in 2014 one of the better goalkeepers the Galaxy's ever had. There's been a lot of comparison between him and you. Are, are you yeah. familiar? Yeah, I, I am. I, I've seen um, his name mentioned on, on social media and stuff. Uh, what year What years was he 
playing for the galaxy how how long ago was it he, that's what I'm he he departed he departed the M, he departed the galaxy in 2015 he did he won an mls cup with us he that was the last mls cup that the that the team won in 2014 he had a okay. monster performance um he played with the panamanian team went to the last world cup with panama actually um and he's still he's still involved with uh, a lot of charitable organizations um but yeah, he he was he was here with us for I believe three seasons, three seasons. Three yeah, I mean, he's he's clearly you know the way the fans speak about him, he's clearly like a, a club legend along with Kevin, yeah. my coach. Kevin so Hartman. yes, um, but yeah, I mean it's difficult for for people to be making comparisons. You know, I've played twelve games and he played for three four years and won an MLS Cup, so um, it's a little bit early for that. You know. I, that's exactly what I'd be thinking if I was him anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm flattered that people are making those comparisons. And I guess if they are, then I'm doing something right. So yeah. that's the more, the more of those comparisons I can kind of conjure up or create and yeah, the better. Well, a couple MLS cup rings on your fingers, Jonathan. And, yeah. and, and, and hopefully you might be getting that statue outside of the Dignity Health Sports Park. Yeah, that would be amazing. That <laughs> right is, right that there next the to your country, target. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe opposite him saving a shot or something like that. <laughs> that would be amazing. But um, uh, no, yeah, just, yeah, I look, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Obviously, I'm taking it um, a game at a time. And like I say, I think it's a little bit early to be making comparisons with club legends. You know, Kevin, who really is a club legend, has been playing for years. Um, Benedo, who obviously he's he's won the MLS Cup. He's played three or four years at a high level. So let's uh, let me finish at least one season or something and see where where we, where we end up. Awesome. And, and and speaking of which, I what is your personal goal? I know that the goal for the team is always to win an MLS Cup, right? Um, but as as a goalkeeper as the starting goalkeeper for the LA Galaxy, what's your personal goal for this season? Is it just to keep a clean sheet every game? Personal goal, perhaps, that you've set for well, yourself? That's just, yeah, I mean, for sure, we should have kept more clean sheets than we have so far. Um, that That's a slight disappointment. But, I mean, if you're talking about just personal goals, it's, you know, trying to be the best goalkeeper in the league. And mm -hmm. I know the best goalkeeper in the league sometimes doesn't always win that award. But where I can play to the level at the to the point where I can at least say to myself, yeah, I think you are or you were the best goalkeeper in the league, um, mm -hmm. regardless of, of of any award or any anything like that. Um, so for me to to try and keep, like keep that kind of level, and um, for that to be a, a target, I think is is a is a healthy thing. You know, you might not always be there, might, but aim aim high and and try and kind of um try and reach it so i guess that's that that's my personal goal awesome awesome man and and you've been on many teams throughout your entire career you've won silverware you know the feeling that you get from a team when you know that it's a team that can amount to a long you know a long good season and perhaps maybe even get some silverware at the end. Do you get that feeling with the LA Galaxy so far? Do you feel that they have what it takes to get that cup? I think at the start of the season, you know, when we played our first few games, I thought, oh, okay, you know, we're, we're, we really are in transition. You know, we're winning games, but, you know, I've played enough games and watched enough games to know, oh, okay, we, you know, we, we have to improve in, in this, this, and this. Um, we, we, and I've been shocked really by how quickly that transition has happened in like the last month to the point where now we're playing teams and we're really kind of dominating with the ball and looking a bit more, um, I was going to say we look a bit more mature, but I was going to then move on to say the only thing we now need to kind of, not the only things, there are obviously more, there are multiple things, but the main thing I think is to try and get that that level of maturity in the way that we in the way that we defend and the way that we control a game after going ahead. 
and just to give the other team real no chance, like no chance where I'm, I'm maybe only making kind of two saves in the game or one save. And really they haven't, like, whether that be from defending properly without the ball or defending with the ball and keeping the ball, you know, we're one or two nil up. Um, and I think we, like I said, the transition has happened really quickly and it's to the point now where I do believe we, we can make that transition and be having good momentum going into the playoffs and possibly do something special this year. It's always difficult with the format here. You know, you could have an amazing season and then have one bad game in the playoffs and then you're out. Right. And like that to me, I have to, adjust, that seems like, almost unfair like <laughs> do you know what i mean like we yeah we're still early in the season but like that is strange when we're playing every week every week you're looking at the league table you're looking at the league table where are we how far are we from them how far ahead of, of the other and then you kind of remember we could achieve all of this at the end of the season and then we just go into a tournament where it's like you're just playing knockout football sure and that's that's something that I've, I've not experienced before so I mean it's for sure exciting for the fans but um, I personally to answer your question in a very long winded way I, I do feel like we can do it I think we've shown a level now where we're one of the best teams in MLS um, and I think the fans can see that you know we've had kind of good periods of 20 minutes in some games or half an hour or a good half but now we really look like you know we we're winning games we should win and then we're playing the best teams in the league and playing better than them but losing and that's kind of like our final step right. is to go really dominate one of the best teams in the league and win and then suddenly you know it's a very different picture so sure. let's see let's see obviously let's see but I think it looks good I mean and so far it's been a kind of a patchwork of 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 lineups because you know there's been uh, obviously the Derek Williams suspension which seemed to have lasted forever uh, there's been players on international duty there's been players that have been injured but it seems like um after this international break the team should be just about complete uh with the addition of Ryan Revelson who by the way I'm phenomenal signing the guy's been phenomenal the last two games um, it, it does seem like this Galaxy team will go far this season. And hopefully at the end of the season, Jonathan, you'll be sporting yourself a nice, beautiful championship Tiffany. It would be ring. amazing. It would <laughs> be amazing, yeah. I, awesome. I know. Yeah. Um, but you're right. We have had a lot of changes, you know, especially the, the defence. We had Derek started off the season injured, then got suspended. Then Danny Steros has um, picked up an injury. Nick was having to come off the bench and play. He started a lot of games as well. Sega didn't come till late and then he just got injured. So Pipo started off the uh, the season injured. Then we have Ryan Re Re Revelison, Revolution, however you say his second name. <laughs> I need to clarify that with him. Starting in midfield, dropping back into centre-back, not his natural position on his debut. So, mm. you know, we... You're right. We have had to make a lot of changes. Luckily, we've got a good squad and lots of good, lots of good players. So, um, I don't, you know, I don't think you can say, "Oh, wait till we have this team," because we've got so many good players. So, sure. this team is just going to be like from game to game. I'm sure changing the manager is probably going to be using all of our good players. Sure. Now, you guys do have a game on on Saturday. That's against the Vancouver Whitecaps. You guys are traveling to Rio Tinto Stadium. That's that's uh, um, the stadium of Real Salt Lake. Obviously, for Canadian travel restrictions, they have to play the game there. But um, you guys already beat them this season. So chances are, right? Us too. Yeah. <laughs> chances are, you guys are, are are looking at possibly another three points here. Um, the team pretty confident about that game. Would you say you guys are are, are feeling pretty confident about that? Uh, it's a dangerous one. Um, it's a dangerous one because, first of all, all away games in the MLS are difficult. And sure. going to that stadium, the pitch wasn't great. The uh, the altitude made it difficult and they stayed in the game. And we were really defending a lot for the last half an hour of it. And that's kind of where my point earlier, you know, we really dominated the game in the first 50, 60 minutes go and score the second or third or control the 
the game with the ball and we wouldn't have to rely on effort to score an incredible goal in the last kick of the game. Right. Um, so, you know, I, we got the three points, but I, I'd like to hope that we will get the three points in a different way, hopefully, this game. Awesome. Um, but it's not going to be easy, for sure. Well, we're going to be looking forward to a clean sheet and at least three goals on the score yes. sheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I think we should have had probably three or four clean sheets in the last four games. You know, we had San Jose with three no up with eight minutes to go and we conceded. Um, Dallas is the same, three nil up. You just have to yell uh, at them louder, man. You have I know. to yell at them louder. Maybe you're right. Maybe I'll just get a <laughs> megaphone and yeah. just... Yeah, start just, using just that verbal abuse man that's how it works <laughs> <laughs> awesome man but hey listen jonathan I, I know you're a busy guy you got to get your rest but but just quickly before i, I let you go and i i do this with 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 all my guests i ask them to send a direct message to the fans while they're on the show um just just something you know that you'd like to tell the fans so far um, and I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Could do it no, in no, Spanish. I'm happy to do that. Could do it in Spanish. Oh no, don't do it in Spanish. <laughs> Could do it in Spanish, but you know, if comfortable in English. You can go ahead and do it in English. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you very much for for your support from from day one. Um, I feel it every game when when you're behind the goal, and obviously we've had some good results so far, but. Every goal that goes in hurts because I know you guys have belief and faith in me. So um, thank you very much for, for the support, even if, um, you know, we've not provided you as many clean sheets as, as what we could. But we are providing you with the results. Um, and hopefully as the season goes on, we'll, we'll experience some real some memories that none of us will ever forget. So um, thank you for making me feel welcome. It's very warm. Um, it's a warm feeling I look forward to playing every game at home um, and that's why I'm playing so so I'm feeling so comfortable in the game and playing well because it feels like home so um, please continue and I'll continue too and um, we can have a successful end to the season awesome man I'm sure Galaxy fans will love hearing that from you And I have look a lot to say but like, <laughs> it's difficult to put it into to, 20 seconds but I, I really have a good feeling um, from them and you know I, I'm very very grateful I just want to get that across absolutely man and I, I galaxy fans feel it trust me we, we feel it and uh, we're, we're happy that the players can feel it as well we're happy that you can feel it um, so that's good it'll go over well with fans I know um, but Jonathan I, I know you need your rest I'm sure you guys have a lot of training to do in preparation for your game against Vancouver this weekend. But I really do want to genuinely thank you for taking your time for uh, for this interview, for setting this up. I want to thank Joanna as well. She's a wonderful person um, for taking the time yes. tonight. Uh, the fans will definitely appreciate learning more about you. And I know I know I'm not alone when I say it that um, you know you're considered one of the fan favorites for this club. So uh, keep doing great things back there, man. And we wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Anytime. I hope we do it again, maybe at the end of the season once we've won something. Absolutely, man. You're going to show us that ring on camera. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Great. So you heard it, folks, from Jonathan Bond, starting goalkeeper for your LA Galaxy. For me, your host, Chris Maldonado. I'd like to say thanks for tuning in. Have yourselves a great week, and we will see you guys after the Vancouver game.